guys and gals, and uh, guess what? It's that time of the month again! What time? Shit pasta time, yes! It is that time of the month where I look at the creepy pastas, or sorry, shit pastas that you have sent me or I have found, and I take the ones that are genuinely written and, uh, you know, not troll pastas or anything, and, you know, I think we all can agree these ones do need work, they're not top tier, but yeah, we're gonna take a look at two. In this case, 3 a.m. with Colonel Campbell. No, that's not a TV talk show. That is an actual creepypasta name. And Burn Baby Burn, two shit pastas that I think you all will genuinely enjoy. So without saying more, let's begin 3 a.m. with Colonel Campbell. Remember that scene in Metal Gear Solid 2 where Colonel Campbell starts talking funny? As if that wasn't creepy enough, there's a story about a boy and his father that's even creepier. A boy named Todd was playing his favorite game, Metal Gear Solid 2, at 3 a.m. in the morning, where Raiden is freed from Ocelot's torture chamber and he starts getting odd messages from the Colonel. Todd had been playing games more recently since the passing of his dad, who died five months ago from a heart attack. He had been lazy and didn't exercise or encourage his son to exercise. Always as usual, the first Kodak call comes up and Raiden answers it. After a few back and forth exchanges, Raiden asks Colonel, Who are you? And strangely, instead of Colonel saying, No more questions, we have Rosemary, Colonel says, It's me. The second codec call is even stranger. When the second call comes in, Colonel originally says, Raiden, turn the game console off right now. This time, he says, Son, turn the game off right now. More lines are exchanged when Raiden asks Colonel, What's wrong with you? The Colonel originally says, Don't worry, it's just the game. It's a game, just like usual. What he now says is, it's just a game, son. Now Rose originally appears and tells Raiden, you'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. This time Colonel says the line, but differently saying, you'll ruin your life sitting so close to the TV. Now in the original, Colonel follows up saying, Raiden, something has happened to me last Thursday when I was driving home. I had a couple of miles to go. I looked up and saw a glowing orange object in the sky. To the east, it was moving very regularly. Suddenly. There was intense light all around me, and when I came to, I was home. What do you think happened to me? Raiden asks, huh? Then Colonel says, fine, forget it. This time Colonel says, son, something happened to me this spring when I was walking home. I had a couple of feet to go. The rest stays original, until after the word irregularly. When he finishes, suddenly there was an intense light all around me, and when I left, I came home. What do you think happened to me? Raiden asks, huh? And Colonel says, fine, forget it. Colonel continues to berate Raiden for playing the game, saying, Honestly though, have you played have you played the game for a long time? Don't you have anything else to do with your time? The codec calls keep coming as Colonel now says, Actually, there is something I've been meaning to tell you, but I just couldn't. I think you should know though. He goes on to tell Raiden about seeing Rose, possibly intimate with another man. The next codec calls a line from Metal Gear Solid 1, telling Raiden to find President Baker. This continues with Colonel say saying, uh, Snake, you are all alone and surrounded by bad guys. This time Colonel says, Son, you are all alone and surrounded by bad habits. The codec calls continue until Colonel says, I was a North American full webworm in my past life. Those were the good old days. What were you in your former life? This time he says, I was a North American father in my past life. Those were the good old days. What were you in my former life? Another codec call passes when Colonel says, Even my patience has its limits. I just can't leave this thing up to you anymore. I'll do the fighting. You can just go home. This time, everything with the fourth sentence is the same, where instead of Colonel saying you can just go home, he now says you can go. You can just go to bed. More codec calls come and go when Colonel says, I can't believe it. That someone who, had, who has committed all those twisted acts in the woman's bathroom would make it this far. This is the end of the world. Everything with the words woman, women's bathroom is the same now, being replaced by the words video game. The next codec call is the outright creepy one. Originally, Colonel says Snake, like Shakespeare said, not had all spent where our desire is got without content. Basically it means that your desire can get to you, get you in trouble if you're not careful. That goes for items too. Don't get too greedy or you might be sorry. Be careful, Snake. Now Colonel says Todd, like Shakespeare said, not had all spent where our desire is got without content. Basically it means that your desire can get you in trouble if you're not careful. That goes for items too. Don't get too greedy, or you might be sorry. Be careful, son. The final codec that is mysteriously different is the one in which Colonel says, I'm not home right now. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep. The lines, I'm not home right now, is replaced by, I'm not home anymore. Todd finally gets the message when the PS2 shuts off by itself.
I distinctively remember as a child playing the Destroy All Human game franchise on the PS2, and one day, when I was bored, thought I would try and look for my old PS2 in the first two games in the franchise. I searched everywhere but could not find the two games, but I did find my PlayStation 2. So I set it up and started playing Kingdom Hearts. After finishing playing some Kingdom Hearts, I was tired, so I went to sleep and then went to college the next day. After finishing college, I got home and discovered the first two Destroy All Humans games on my bedside table, still unwrapping as if straight from the store, with an envelope by the side of them. At first I was confused to how they got there, and then just thought it must have been a present of someone, as it is not a secret that I, that I love the franchise. I opened the envelope, and it contained a 32 megabyte memory card and a letter. I looked at the letter, and all of a sudden, large, jagged writing. It's, it read, Burn, Baby, Burn. I thought nothing of it, as this was the slogan of the second game, and proceeded to boot up my PlayStation 2 and place a memory card in it to see the data on it. It contained one file, which was some saved data from the original Destroy All Human game. I then opened the first game, and booted it up. Everything was normal until I got to the load game screen. As it said that the game file in the memory card had been played for negative 50 hours and Crypto was on a zeroth clone, which is impossible. But I thought nothing of it, as I thought it must have been a glitch in the system, so I loaded up the game. The game had been completed, and it seemed like all the secrets and powers had been unlocked, so I then disguised Crypto and explored Capital City, as it was the location I was in. I then started scanning people to keep my disguise up, but instead of the witty replies you normally get, they only said, We see right through you. I was confused, but continued exploring as I thought it would—I thought it just been a hacked save file. I then reached the White House, and the game froze. I rebooted the game and tried to load the file again, but the game just crashed back to the PlayStation 2 start menu. I thought it must have been a glitch and opened the second game and started it up. Everything appeared in order and I started a new game, but instead of jumping into the opening cutscene, it loaded into Crypto stood outside the White House, which was on fire. He started to walk towards the White House without me even touching the controller and then turned around and faced the camera. His eyes were pure white and he was holding a sign with exactly the same message with, the, with exactly the same font as on the letter which read, Burn Baby Burn. Every human character in the game then appeared behind him, all of them with red eyes holding up signs saying, We see right through you. All of them burst into flames and they were all screaming with the most realistic scream, mind you. It pierced my eardrums as they all dropped to the ground dead. I then could control Crypto again and proceeded to inspect the bodies. As I looked at the charred remains on the ground, I gasped with horror. <gasps> the faces of the people who had died were the faces of people I loved. My family, my friends, even my girlfriend. Crypto then once again turned around without my control and stared at me. Crypto then held up a picture of me, charred and dismantled, and then he spoke in a deep, demonic voice saying, Burn, baby, burn. Wow. When I ask you lovely people to send me links to shit pastas, crappy pastas, whatever you want to call them, you really go above and beyond. I mean, damn. First Metal Gear creepy pasta and Destroy All Humans creepy pasta and man, what what should I say first? You know, I mean, they're not the best creepy pastas, uh, far from them. But let's talk about 3 a.m. with Colonel Campbell first. To be honest, the premise, in my opinion, was quite good. Really amazing, really. Uh, the the last part of Metal Gear Solid 2, with the Colonel contacting you with weird phrases and responses, um, which honestly, you know, do, it is a creepy moment if you played that game. I mean, it's a moment that just seems awkward. It seems surreal to you. I mean, it's it's not it's. It's an off moment that does affect every player who plays the game. And if this was done properly in a creepypasta, not to mention the fact if you do constantly build up these codec calls or phenomenon in Metal Gear Solid 2, it could be a really awesome creepypasta. And you know, couple with the fact that you have this uh, father who passed away talking through the game, through these off messages, I mean, this could be an amazing creepypasta. This could be an awesome Metal Gear Solid creepypasta. Good premise. But then, ultimately, it does fail in the execution, uh, with the responses and whatnot. Uh, this could have been a lot more better if it had some build-up, and there was more explanation, and the responses could be more hard-hitting, and it could be more personal as well. I really think that with some subtle changes, this could be a very good creepypasta. Since, in my opinion, this is the perfect setup for a Metal Gear creepypasta. As if that part wasn't creepy enough when we first played it, pfft, it could be really nice as well. Also, like Alex Melee, 
It ends abruptly, to be honest. After the final codec call, all the all, all that happens is the console turns off and Todd just immediately gets the message. I mean, really putting the pieces together there, Magnum P.I. No questioning, no further investigation, we're just gonna drop the subject about the game referencing dead family members, right? Pfft, I don't know, man. Would you, what would you do in the comments below? Tell me, would you investigate, would you just turn the console off when the Colonel Cam when Colonel Campbell just tells you to turn the console off? What would you do? Tell me in the comments below. Now moving on to Burn Baby Burn, man, was this the worst of the two? I mean, 3M with Colonel Campbell had, you know, it had the potential, but this was, I mean, what can we say? You want to play Destroy All Humans, which is a sick game, by the way, if you haven't played it, and the next day, out of fucking nowhere, no explanation, the game appears on your bedside table with an envelope that says, Burn Baby Burn. I mean, hell, the only explanation I can think of is the spirit of Bootman Bill came that night and just decided to, I don't know, be Santa Claus and just give you the game. I don't know, man. Bootman Bill came. I mean, that really killed it for me. Look, I would rather have an old guy or something give the game for free, a used game, or something along the lines, but magically appearing, or, or I guess given the explanation that uh, people like you playing Destroy All Humans, so they decided to give you Destroy All Humans with a memory card and, uh, and a somewhat obscure message... No way, man. No way. Then you see the negative 50 hours in Crypto on Clone number zero. Like, even if you haven't played the game, it wouldn't make any sense. So, how would you think nothing of it? So, like, it's common occurrence and everything, or suddenly, you know, it's a glitch. I mean, really? Nah. Then without any build-up, all you see is the characters telling you they can see through you. Fucking perverts, by the way. And then after Burn Baby Burn, all of them sporadically combust, and Crypto with red eyes, mind you, and a demonic voice, says, uh, says, burn baby burn. My god, I mean, what the hell? I don't even know how we can fix this, okay? I don't know. It doesn't even look like a matter of build-up or anything, or... I, I think it really has to be rewritten A to Z, to be honest. There are too many cliches, and they really do ruin the experience wholeheartedly. In the end, these creepypastas were generally not good. Uh, but in my eyes, 3AM and Colonel Campbell could be a lot better with some tweaks since the premise is amazing, I, I really do like it. But without any buildup and really no feeling or impact by the responses, it ultimately fails. But I do think it has the potential. Burn Baby Burn on the other hand, well it should definitely burn, okay? <laughs> what do you think about these two creepypastas, which one is better and what would you change to make these creepypastas better? This has been another episode of Shit Pastas, and if you like what you saw then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me Mudahar and I am out. Thank you.